Hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again for another series video of taking a look at. And, um, guys, see my last video I was talking about some other guys. Um, as training camp draws near, um, just looking at some of these guys that, you know, um, are jockeying to make the team because, again, there's only 53 men on the roster and the Cowboys have tough decisions to make because a lot of these guys that I've been talking about or are going to be talking about in this series, um, it's going to be hard to cut them. Now, um, there's talent all over this roster, and Jason Garrett always um, spoke about on this team um, competition and basically, you know, can nobody sit sit around and rest? Because again, you may be a core player, but you can also lose your position if you if you don't watch out. So first of all, I wanted to say um, to the victims uh, in California, if if you were affected by the earthquakes that that's been happening this, in Southern California, um, I hope that everybody is okay. You know, here in the East Coast, we don't really deal with earthquakes ever like that. So, me personally, I, I wouldn't know how to handle it, considering I've never been to California, so I don't know. I know that some earthquakes, you know, you guys get on a daily basis, and they're really small. But I heard this one was like a six or something like that, so I think that's kind of a serious one. So, I hope everybody's okay, those of you that were affected by that. Um just some other quick news before I get into it. Um, as you guys already know, and I know Mark and some other guys talked about it already. Um, good news, Ezekiel Elliott's not getting suspended um, from that incident that happened in Las Vegas. Thank God. Um, let's just hope that it's a lesson learned, that he stays out of trouble. Um, even if he didn't do it, you know what I mean? They're going to be looking out for him because when you're a repeat offender, the NFL starts to look at you. So, you know, I just... You know, he talked to Roger Goodell and everything seemed to go well. So um, let's just hope that from now on, if anything happens, he has representatives there to, hey, let's get you the hell out of this situation so this stuff doesn't happen again. Also, too, we got to figure out what's going to happen with Tyrone Crawford. That's still up in the air at this point. We know Rico Gathers has one game. So, again, this roster is going to be affected by all these players that, you know, are said to be suspended or um, whatever have you. I mean, even the Randy Gregory situation, he, um, applied for reinstatement. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, also too, um, the guy, um, Kendrick Norton, defensive lineman from the, um, the Miami Dolphins, just a sad situation. I saw the story on that, um, earlier in the week. Um, I wasn't really going to talk about it, but I mean, as, as I delve into it myself and was looking at what happened, like he got into a, a very bad car accident and to the point that the EM, the, uh, the EMTs had to literally cut his left arm off at the scene of the crime, not even at the hospital. The accident was so bad that they had to cut his arm off at the scene, scene of the accident. And, you know, shout out to, uh, much prayers and love go out to him and his family. Um, we know he's not going to play football this year, if not ever at all. Um, you know, you're a defensive lineman, or when you play football, period, you need both of your arms. I mean, there's players in the league that don't have hands, like, uh, what is it, Sharif Griffin or whatever. Um, you know, you can get away with that, but you can't get away with not having a whole arm. So, you know, it, it, it sucks because your football year, your football career is over. You know, unless he gets a prosthetic arm and learn how to, you know, deal with that in the future. But, you know, right now, I know that's very devastating, not only for his family, but for him, you know, to, first of all, deal with the pain of that and the pain of not playing in your career, not doing the things that you worked your whole life to play in the NFL, um, not being able to do that anymore. And I know that's a tough situation, but, um, you know, prayers up for uh, Kendrick Norton and his family. Um, but back to the Cowboys. So in this um, series, I'm going to be talking about uh, Mitch Mitch Hyatt today, offensive tackle from Clemson. Now, I actually had him on my draft board um, in the sixth or seventh round. I think, no, I had him in the seventh round on my draft board. You you go all the way back and look at that one. You you I I spoke on him. Um, he was a standout two time All American, a two time national champion for um, for Clemson. Now. You say that somebody like that with those accolades not getting drafted is kind of crazy, isn't it? Well, a lot of the um, scouts were basically saying a couple of things about him that is the reason why he didn't get drafted, and it kind of scared teams away. One, um, 
one knock on him that basically said that from when he was a freshman to a senior, you didn't see much improvement. You didn't see much growth. He was kind of the same person he was from his freshman year to his senior year. Um, and they said that he lacks some some power and 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 quick and lateral quickness. Now, those are the things you need as an offensive lineman, period, across the board in the NFL. But those are things that they can work on with him, you know, just, just his timing, getting off the ball, things of that nature. So, um, the Cowboys looked at that and said, you know what, we're going to go ahead and pick him up. And again, these undrafted players, you know, when they call them, they can say, oh, yes, I'll accept to go to your team or I won't. One thing that Mitch Hyde said that um, when they called him, he said he chose the Cowboys because there is a contingency of great, some of the best offensive linemen on this team. And I agree with that. And he feels that he can learn from these guys and hone his craft better, which tells me that he didn't get a lot of um, teaching where he was before. Now, I don't know if that's true or not, but I'm just guessing that for a player to say, um, you know, I want to go here because I feel like these guys can help me get to a place where I need to be and some of, some of the stuff that I wasn't getting before. So a lot, a lot of times is that, you know, some, some players need one-on-one, -on -one, especially when you have guys like him that been a two-time All-American and been on a national championship team. It's like you've had success, but individually you struggled in certain areas. Now, um, for you to come off of a team's board, especially, you know, the, these NFL draft boards, you know, it could be little things with you that can make you drop. And, you know, unfortunately for him, he dropped completely out of the draft. But um, good thing for the Cowboys, they got another guy that can compete for a job. Now, again, just like with some of these other undrafted rookies, it's going to be uphill battle because you're looking at the tackles that we have on this team, Lyle Collins and, and Tyrone Tyron Smith, um, you know, you're not going to unseat these guys, but I mean, his best bet is the practice squad. But I think I, I had, I have high hopes for um, Hyde. I think that some, somewhere in the future, he can hone his craft and get better. Just like with Connor Williams, when he came in there, he was undersized. Look at him this year. He got jacked over the summer and with a, with a full, a, another full off season with the Cowboys, I think that it's going to be great for the, a second year player like Connor Williams. But again, you look at the offensive lineman we have on this team, we got depth, we got a lot of guys. So, you know, um, even with his credibility, um, it's going to be a lot. Now it's funny because when you look at him and ev like I said, everything that he's accomplished and you scratch your head, you're like, why was he not drafted? Um, you look at some of those cons, those are the reasons why, but still the fact that you have these accolades and he was a solid player. It's not like he sucked, but I mean, I think in the NFL, he just needs to work on his foot, his, his foot quickness and overall speed. If he works on those two things, I think that, um, teams will start to, well, if the Cowboys don't keep him, teams will start to look at him or the Cowboys may keep him as a backup role. Who knows? Um, but again, those those are those are things that you can learn, especially from guys that's in the league that's been doing it for some time. Um, it's just all about timing when it comes to playing in the trenches. Um, you know, maybe he was just taught the wrong way. Who knows? Um, but he definitely has the he definitely um, can compete. He's got the heart and soul. Like both him and Larry Allen Jr. These guys definitely have the the intelligence and and. They've been there, so I feel like these guys can learn their craft and get there. It's not like they're a lost cause because the Cowboys definitely wouldn't have picked them up if it wasn't for that. Yeah, you got guys that are camp bodies, but I don't think these guys are so much so that. They see the talent. The talent is there. They just have to be um, taught in a different way. And I think that with Mark Colombo um, being the offensive coordinator right now, I think that he can help develop this young guy. He's already out there with Larry Allen Jr. and Mitch Hyatt, and they've, you know, gave them guys high praises and said that, you know, um, they've been learning and they've been out here grinding and doing what they need to do. So that's half the battle. This team always harps on the right type of guys, and they've been getting the right type of guys in here, and I can't do anything but appreciate that. Um, one fun fact about him is that um, – he is the nephew of Dan Benish. I know you. I know you guys don't know who the hell that is, um, unless you're unless you're diehard Clemson fans. Um, all ACC defensive tackle on the Clemson um, first ever national championship team in 1981. So you look at that. 35 years later, his nephew Hyatt won 
the national championship for the second and the third time. So um, it's interesting how like family, you know, you follow the steps of your family. You go to the same college as your uncle and, you know, you win a national championship, not only completing what he did once, but you did it twice back to back. So, um, yeah, that's 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 pretty much uh what I have with that. So, look, guys, let me know what you think about uh, Mitch Hyatt. Like I said, I he was on my draft board in the seventh round um, when he didn't get drafted. And I actually saw the Cowboys actually, he was on their list as um, free agent pickups right after the draft. And I was like, ha, Cowboys got him anyway. So, technically, I was right on my draft, but just wasn't drafted. But this Cowboys still got him regardless. But, um, again, they got options right now. They have a lot of guys. Um that are jockeying for positions on this team, even with the injuries we have, guys coming back from injuries, I think that it's good because these younger guys are getting the chance of working with the first team and the second team, and they're able to compete and they can with competition. And if they're showing what they can do with these guys, then um, that's going to get the eye of the coaches. So that's how I feel about that. But like I said, let me know what you think about Mitch Hyatt in the comments. Um, uh, I'm gonna be doing some more guys in in the <laughs> in the next coming days and up, like I said, leading up into the uh, the training camp going to Oxnard. So, and again, thanks again to all my subscribers. Appreciate you guys. This is your boy E2 Blue. Always keeping it real. Talk to y'all soon.